previously with Cyber Cherry. What the heck? There's an airship. I haven't seen one of those in forever. We've got to signal them. We're activated. But suddenly there's a flash of white light. Nothing could be done. My crew is gone. If anyone finds this, get word to HQ and lay us to rest at the peak of the mountain. Since I don't have any communication equipment of my own, uh, we're gonna have to salvage it from the wreckage here. I hope they don't mind. With any luck, we'll be able to set this up at home. Survivors, we have location. Find you soon. there just finishing up with the caldera bridge thought i'd get a big task out of the way here anyways welcome on back for episode 5 of my minecraft survival let's play wherever you are i hope you're doing well this bridge is much like the other segments that we've done best to just knock it out we needed a connector between the village and the island it'll be a little bit more friendly for them and It'll be a little bit more friendly for our wandering traders. We don't have a lot of emeralds right now, but when we get them, we'll definitely be looking for them. Moving up to the head of the bridge, we already cleared out the trees in preparation for our build for today. The Caldera Gateway. You've seen the thumbnail, but first I have some extra wood. I thought we could place some benches down. You never know how far someone has traveled, so this will give them a little bit of a rest before entering the city. Maybe eventually we could even have some vendors on the bridge selling some refreshments. That would really elevate the experience. Speaking of traveling, we might get some visitors today from a foreign community. A few days ago, we talked with the headquarters of a trading company. Let's just say it didn't go very well. And apparently the sand traders know where the island is. With that being said, we're not just going to wait around. We got plenty of work to do today. With our iron needs met from the iron tower, and plenty of saw blades, we are ready for a lateral move into wood production. Also, we found a new friend. We're calling him Rusty. My wife thought Flame would be a good name for him. Yeah, it's all right. She can have the next one. <laughs> Back at the entry point of the island, this is where obviously the gateway is going to go. And we're going to start off with function before wrapping the aesthetic part around it. And the functional part is, of course, going to be a tree chopper. Now, you might be concerned at first because our auto tree chopper is going right smack dab in the middle of the entry passage. You're just going to have to trust the process. I've got the materials stashed. Let's start placing some blocks. This farm design comes from the famous enx 4 I placed the link in the description of the farm. This is also a block by block tutorial that walks you through everything. This build is approachable for folks that don't have a lot of resources or for those who don't have a lot of redstone knowledge, like me. <laughs> Even if you don't fit into those two categories, it's just an overall well put together and efficient farm. And we're back. That was a pretty painless build. I did die from a skeleton over here, but I think it was worth the price. <laughs> uh, let's get up top to see what we've built here. The underbelly of this thing is still a little bit under construction, but hopefully it is functional. So we already have bone meal and the dispenser here and we're gonna fill all our slots but the one we want bone meal in. We put our saplings in our offhand and then we can turn this on. There we go. See, it'll keep spitting out until we have a full inventory. Let's give it a second. 
And then once I can't pick up any more, it'll drop on that plate right there and stop it. Oh, shucks. I need a dirt block. Okay, I think we are ready to rip. Where's the on switch? Here it is. On. Hopefully this thing doesn't tear itself apart. Oh, baby. Don't destroy yourself. Oh, dude, let's go. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. I built this about five times and thankfully I haven't failed yet. But now you just hold right click. You got yourself a nice cheesy tree farm. While this is running, I'm going to grab a quick cup of coffee. As long as you have a stable income of bone meal, a majority of the wood types can be farmed. However, dark oak and mangrove unfortunately don't fall within this group. Now that we've run the farm for about 15 minutes, let's see what the products of our non-labor are. Oh yeah, this is like 10 to 15 minutes. Not bad. Plenty of sticks and saplings. Holy cats. This is definitely worth the bill. Holy cow. And let's see how much bone meal we chew through. A couple stacks from there. A couple stacks from there. So it is important to have a good amount of bone meal. However, we are using the TNT duplication. So I, I honestly can't complain. Did we already turned this thing off. Goodness, I'm scatterbrained. On and off. And back upstairs, you can see we have a slight problem. This, of course, doesn't look very good because we're going to build the arch around it. But we also have an issue of there's a big hole in the ground here. How I'm going to solve that is with an auto generating floor that pushes out and comes together. If you haven't seen a stone generator in action, don't worry, we'll get it running today. But before we can get the floor functional, we're missing a key component, blue ice. This is so we can make basalt. So blue ice plus the lava and soul sand will equal basalt and it'll continuously push it out. But we'll get there in a moment. I remember from last episode, there's an ice biome just over yonder past the crashed airship. So let's get on over there. Not much time wasted today. Should be a simple enough errand. Just need our trusty chest boat and a silk touch pickaxe. I'm thinking if we can get this farm fully operational through the use of this blue ice, then maybe, just maybe, it could be of some use to the sand traders community, wherever they are. You know, I'm not gonna judge a book by its cover, but if the sand traders are coming from a desert, maybe some of this blue ice could be of use to them too. It's getting kind of bad out here. Fortunately, I left my pet at home. Thankfully, home is right around the corner. There's another airship. I wasn't expecting them to get here that quick. What are they doing in this inclement weather? Did that just happen? Oh my gosh. These guys just can't catch a break. Wonder who their safety officer is. It looked like they crashed on the north side of the island. Let's get rid of this thunderstorm. There it is. Oh, it looks mostly intact. Seems like the trees cushioned the blow a little bit. Let's see if we can get up there. Let's see, do some parkour. Wow. Oh, we have a survivor. My goodness. How's it going, buddy? Are you all right? Looks like you're a little tangled up here in the rigging. How's it going? I'm Cyber Cherry. What's your name? Haboob? What the? Is it memories? Oh, what's this? Sand Trader's Dictionary, Volume 8 H. Haboob. <sighs> oh. A strong wind carrying a mass of dust and sand. 
that has been lifted from the ground in very dry areas such as deserts. You know, it's all coming together now. You got Captain Cactus. Oh, I'm sorry. Too soon. Oh, you're a major. Major Haboob. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, let's get you out of here, buddy. There you go. Careful, we're up in the trees. Are you hurt? It's like you're a little shaken up, but you'll be fine. So, Major Haboob and I talked for a while, and he said that he was sent by HQ to search for Captain Cactus and to make contact with us. I'll tell you what though, he is stubborn. Being roughed up, he still insisted that we go to the crash site of the Mirage. He wanted to see it with his own eyes. I could tell that it was taking a toll on him, but again, he insisted on seeing the resting place of the crew. It was hard for him to look at them straight on, his fellow airmen gone. I could tell though, he was thankful for the care I had taken with them. And finally, back at home, I patched up his scrapes the best I could, and I got him a warm meal. While he ate, I read him the last entry of Captain Cactus. I thought he would be angry, since I was the one who lit the beacon blinding the crew, but he assured me that it was just one of many factors. So, now that we got Major Haboob some food, we've got him upstairs for some rest. It's now time to move on to our main project for today. We of course need the blue ice that we got from the ice spikes biome and then we're gonna place it right on top of these pistons. Now I think that's everything taken care of. Let's see what this does. Oh baby, let's go dude. It's not too fast but it'll get the job done. Let's speed this up a second. Oh yeah. Look at this. There's some holes right here, but that'll be covered up shortly. Now we have our walkway finally generated. This now marks the end of the functional build of the stone and tree farm. It's now time to jump into the aesthetics and build the outer shell of the gateway. Resources are gathered from the ravine as usual. And now it's time to jump into a time lapse. Let's put on some music. <laughs> Dude, it feels good to have this in our world. Gosh, it's grand. We'll take a look at it a little bit more here. But you'll notice there's some cracks in the edge of the building here. And it's starting to seem like some light is getting in there. Also, the water from the fountain is seeping over there. Whoa! What the heck was that? Oh yeah, now that's some rapid tree growth. This finishes off the build nicely if I do say so myself. Now, it's an old but sturdy ruined structure and I guess the trees would be integrated into the core of the building, giving it a little bit more strength. And if we look to the iron tower, it's finished in much of the same style as the archway, a very similar block palette with the gray stones and the deep slate underbelly. Now I quite enjoy the crooked nature of these trees kind of jutting out of the structure. They add a lot of life to it. And with the core tree in the middle, I had to hide some redstone. So I added some opaque green blocks in different variations. 
terracotta, concrete, leaves, and moss. So that leads us into my building process. My first thought when planning this was a simple shell around the redstone. I only like looking at it in the maintenance areas. My second thought though was the size of it. So if we zoom out, I tried to balance the size of the mountains and the gate. Given the height of the build, I was worried that it might dwarf the mountains, but at the same time, I did want to get a grand scale. So hopefully this gateway is a little bit more welcoming to our friends. We'll have to see what Haboob thinks here in a little bit. I'm not worried though. So now I guess the only thing left is to do a function check. Looks like the barrel is clear, the generate walkway already on, and flip on the TNT duper. Let's go. So it didn't rip itself apart. Thank goodness. Uh, so as you can see, the floorway is being destroyed. If we got any intruders, they're not getting through, that's for sure. I think we're done with the machine for now. And if you were curious, the items generated from the farm flow through here and into the chest, collected by a water stream. So overall, super proud. Got the walkway closing up perfect mix of form and function so now i think it's time we go check up on our new friend haboob it's been a couple days so hopefully he's rested haboob i'm home hmm. thought he would have been up by now check upstairs not there what the heck is that racket Tell me he's upstairs working on the equipment. Sounds like it. Let's go see what he's up to. Looks like the ladder's broken. What is this? Drop shoot. Yeah. Maybe he added a bubble elevator. Sure enough, he did. I knew I had a good feeling about this guy. Simple construction, but worth the build every time. Holy cats, he's been busy. Looks like the first thing he did was some safety rails. Good call, Haboob. We don't need you falling off any roofs. I thought you'd be resting still, but you're right back to work. You even made a nice map of the island. Heck yeah, this thing looks sweet. I only have full view of the island. I guess it comes natural to a cartographer. So. Haboob and I talked for a bit. He fixed the comm link to HQ and discussed a way forward. It seems that their aircraft keep crashing due to being overweight. And the best way to bridge our communities would be to solve that issue for them. So this has been on my mind for a while. It's time to leave the island for some much needed advancements. The best way I can think to do this is by conquering the end and getting shulker boxes. Finally, we're going to the end. Ah, oh, finally. But that'll have to wait until next episode. As always, thank you for watching. And if you enjoy what we're doing here, consider subscribing. The story continues next time with me, Cyber Cherry.